Amen. Good morning. So good to be with you. Can give, we give our online family a big hand. And I want to give you a big hand. Give yourself a big hand for being here today. Amen. So good to have you with us. Brand new series called Christmas at D.C. And in this series, we're going to talk about the Advent. We're going to talk about the different pieces of the Advent and as we're, as we're working through this. And today, what I'm going to do is just give you kind of a thought process on what is the Advent. Because a lot of people, um, you're, you, maybe you're not familiar with it and what it looks like. So you'll get a good definition there. But one of the ways that I could kind of tell you what that looks like is possibly as, as you're in this season, imagine that you're waiting for this long awaiting waited package to arrive and how many of you know right now we seem to be having a little bit of problem out there you know I don't know what's going on but that's not on me right it's not my circus not my monkeys amen and so it's going to be all right but you think about a package for a moment as a matter of fact let me pull this one out one of these this is empty by the way we sent your boxes out okay but uh, these packages go all over the world okay and so what think about that child uh, you know awaiting this package what would it be like here you know you 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 know it's coming like and I don't know if they get to do it or not but they've been tracking it online you can check the updates every day I'm sure that somebody's doing that but that's what we do right we check it all the time so the anticipation builds as the delivery date draws closer this happened to Renee and I a couple of weeks back we had our refrigerator freezer it just went out on us and of course we got a new one and it was supposed to be delivered and having you know it did not get delivered on the day they said it would right and so but that happens but then when it did come in amen it was awesome because most of the time um, if it's a big item we've prepared a spot for it we're going to imagine how to transform our home or it'll make this special event some of you are doing a lot of parties right now Christmas parties that kind of thing you've got all your stuff coming in not from Timu but anyway you got it coming in come on Y'all with me today? I was going to make sure you're with me. And because uh, we've had that happen here, and it's not good. I just want to tell you. And, uh, but, you know, it's a special event, but it's going to make it complete is what happens. But finally the day comes. The package arrives. There's excitement. There's joy and a sense of fulfillment as you unwrap it. That's what happened to us as those guys unwrapped our big box. And we had a new refrigerator freezer for my birthday, for her birthday, for two Christmases. Amen. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) That's how it goes, right? But Advent is a lot like this. It's a season of like expectant waiting. That's what it's all about. It's not for a package. It's actually for the best, actually I can say the greatest gift ever given, Jesus Christ. And so just as you prepared for whatever your delivery is, what happens in this season, hopefully you'll get this as you come in and out of here and all throughout your week, you prepare your heart for the arrival of the Savior. Of course, we celebrate that on December 25th and, you know, at Destination Church, we have two, we'll have two Um, Christmas Eve services for you and uh, we always go all out on those services just so you know that if you're new to us but the scripture would tell us in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 for to us a child is born to us a son is given and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father the prince of peace and so as we're seeing this what has happened and you're going to hear a couple of stories today out of scripture but in the new testament there had been 400 years of silence from god and so all of a sudden you know the angels and all the stuff that we celebrate here it happens and so when i use the word advent what is the advent in the bible what we see is it's a time of preparation for the birth of Jesus and his second coming. So if you're here today and you didn't know it, um, we have notes inside of your worship guide. You can get those out and you'll be able to fill in some blanks there as we're walking through this, this today. But the meaning of the word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, all right? Adventus, which means coming, right? He's, he's coming. They were waiting for him. It's the translation of the Greek word parousia, which originally referred to the second coming, all right? Because there was the first coming when Jesus comes and we get to celebrate, okay? That's what we're celebrating, you know, at Christmas and all that. But then reality is Jesus said he's coming back again. And so there's a second advent where we're waiting for him to come. And so 
Historically in the church, Advent is a four-week season of preparation and celebration that leads up to Christmas. And that, that's where we are today. It's a time to remember his birth. It's a time to anticipate his, his, him returning back to, to come get the bride, his church. And so what I would say to you today and, um, is this. There's a, lot of good, um, th- there's a lot of good Advent devotions out there. Just it'll take you from now to, to I mean, there, there's some great family devotions. There's some, a lot out there that'll take you from now, day one, because here we are, December 1st. Wow, it doesn't seem that way, does it? Anyway, and all the way through to, you know, to the 25th. And, you know, do it as a family. There's some great children's Advent things out there. Do it as a family. Let it, you know, let it be a celebration, you know, every day and, uh, to remember his birth and anticipate the return. Pastor Louis Giglio, he would say it like this to us. The word Advent means expectation. Everybody say that with me. Expectation, right? And so he says the, it means expectation What Advent can do for us is create a sense of hope. Everybody say hope. Because that's what we're looking at today. Hope in in the waiting. That's that's kind of where we are, what we're doing this morning. Every week at Destination Church, if you're new to us, every week we have what we call a soul tattoo. Our soul is our mind. It's our will. It's our emotions. Um, You know, and and if we, we, tattoos are typically permanent, so if you walked out of here with one thing tattooed in your mind today, I would want it to be this, faith trusts God for today, hope anticipates his promise for tomorrow. And so the question that I felt like all week long that I kept hearing the Lord whisper to me was, where do you need hope today? Like individually, corporately, maybe as a family, uh, you know, um, where, where do you need hope today? Just, just think through that this morning I, because, you know, listen, I don't know about you, but for me, I find myself thinking about two words, not just one. When, when, you know, even when we're lighting the hope candle, I'm thinking through this, two words when I think about hope. It's not just hope, but faith as well. I think they go together. They really do. And so I'm going to give you two Bible stories where we see these words used for a moment. The first word is faith. And so I'm going to read to you out of Hebrews 11. But this story is an old te- it's, a, it's a culmination of the Old Testament story from Genesis out of Genesis tw- chapter 12 through 25. So they shortened it in there. And this is what it looks like in Hebrews 11 verse 8. It says, it was by faith... That Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. Some of you today, you've moved from other places and you've, you know, you've come in here. You felt like you maybe heard a word from the Lord or your job moved you here or whatever it was. In this case, God called him to leave his home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. Some of you, maybe that's how you got here. I don't know. And even when he reached the land, God promised him he lived there by faith. For he was like a foreigner. And, you know, if you're a Christian in here today, we are foreigners in this, on this earth. We're pilgrims here. Because we're going, there's a, there's a heavenly home for us. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to it. Living, and it says he was living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward. In other words, he was, it, it was that advent. It was that anticipation, expectation. Confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations. A city designed and built by God. It was the heavenly city. Really and truthfully, he he was having a a prophetic vision of what was coming. It was by faith that even Sarah, it was his wife, was able to have a child, though she was barren and was way too old to have kids. She believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation come from this one man who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people that, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there's no way to count them. So it was so much. So why this story right now? Because Abraham demonstrates unwavering faith by trusting God, um, by trusting God's promises. And today, we, for us, it's trusting, yes, his promises, but the word of God of descendants, even though he and Sarah were old, they were childless, his disbelief wasn't based on visible evidence. His belief wasn't based on visible evidence, but on confidence in God's word. In other words, Genesis 15, 6, if we go back to Genesis, would say it like this. 
Abraham believed the Lord and he credited to him as uh, he being the Lord credited to him as righteousness. So I would ask you again today, like where do you need faith today? Where do you need hope today? It, you know, in your life with what's going on, maybe with your business, maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Abraham's faith teaches us to trust God in the present, even when circumstances seem impossible. As a matter of fact, the words that we use all the time, nothing is impossible with God, comes out of the Christmas story. It's the angels speaking to Mary, right? And so as we see that, so faith with Abraham, hope today. I want to use another, I want to use um, Simeon and Anna for a moment and talk about hope, all right? Simeon and Anna, they were awaiting the Messiah. It's, it's such a powerful story. Out of Luke 2, we see this. Uh, you know, so there's so many events have already happened, but the scripture would tell us that there's a man in Jerusalem called Simeon. He was righteous and devout. Can you say that with me? Righteous and devout. That's the life we should be living as, as a Christian. He was awaiting for the consolation of Israel. In other words, he was waiting for, for Jesus to come the first time is what that means, all right? And the Holy Spirit was on him. I believe that's where the Lord, you know, he wants to be with us. He, the Holy Spirit wants to be with us. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. We see it again. How I many you know the Holy Spirit can reveal stuff to you too? He wants to reveal stuff to you. He wants to reveal stuff to you in this season that we're in. You know, this Christmas season, this season of miracles, this season of Advent. You know, everywhere that you go, He does. If you will listen, He will reveal. And the, So it had been revealed to Him by the Holy Spirit that He would not die before he, had, uh, before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, He went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for Him what the custom of the law required... Simeon took him in his arms and he praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. In other words, Simeon was like, I'm old, I can go home now, come on, right? For my eyes have seen your salvation. I, I wonder how many of your eyes have seen salvation today. Like we talk about salvation. How many of your, the eyes of your heart have seen salvation today? Simeon was looking at what would bring salvation for us. Which, and then he goes on and says, A light for revelation to the Gentiles. That would be me. That would be you today, unless you're um, of Jewish descent in here. And the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to, his, to Mary, his mother, The child is destined to cause the fall and arising of many in Israel. And to be a sign that will be spoken against. So that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. Mary basically is what he's saying. And so there was also though. We had Simeon. There was a prophet. Anna the daughter of Penuel. Of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. And then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worship night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to who, all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. So why this story, Rodney? Because Simeon and Anna exemplify hope as they waited expectantly for God's promise of the Messiah. Simeon's proclamation upon seeing Jesus reflects the fulfillment of hope rooted in God's faithfulness. Don't worry, I'm going to get to you in a moment. As a matter of fact, I, I can't get this off my heart today, and I don't know who it's for. I felt like in worship today that um, you just think week in and week out when you come in that we just sing songs and play music because that's how services are supposed to start. But I want you to know today that that's not it at all. That we, our heart's desire is that you would be able to come into the presence of the Lord. And that the Lord would change you in the midst of worship. As much or more so than any other part of our service. It's also a part of, when I'm coming into this, I'm praying. I'm, I'm praying in worship. I'm thinking. I'm asking the Lord. It's not just, oh, here we go again, another song. Oh, here we go again, some more music. Look, I love our musicians. I love our singers, all these people. But they know what I know. It's all about presence. We got, if, we, if, we, if his presence isn't here, y'all, we've missed it. 
If his presence isn't here, nothing's going to happen. If his presence isn't here, lives aren't going to be changed. If his presence isn't here, absolutely nothing happens. And that's how I feel day in and day out. I, you know, and if, if anybody um, exudes that from them, it's the prophetess Anna. Day and night, night and day, says she was in the temple worshiping. Day and night, night and day, she fasted. She prayed. We're getting ready to go into a season of fasting and prayer when we, once, when we go into January. And my goodness. So Simeon and Anna, they exemplify hope as they waited expectantly for God's promise of the Messiah. So what if next week you come in expecting God to show up in your life, in your home, in your business, whatever it is, you know, and you take this presence back out with you and you go with it wherever, you know, wherever it is when you leave today. Luke 2, that passage, you know, where do you need hope today? I love it. The, you know, Simeon says, Sovereign Lord, as you promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. I want your eyes to see the salvation of the Lord today. Simeon's hope reminds us to live with confidence that God's promises will come to pass even if we must wait. Some of you have been waiting even this year for things to happen. You've been waiting for stuff to happen in your life, maybe in your marriage, in other things. You've been waiting for it to happen, right? I need you to hear me today. The difference between biblical faith and hope lies in their focus and their function. In other words, in our life as a Christian, though they're deeply connected. And so I would ask you the question one more time, where do you need hope today so faith is confidence in the present it's like right here right now complete trust confidence in God confidence in his word confidence in his promises often tied to the to the present the right now and what God's actively doing in our lives right it's a Hebrews 11 1 now faith it's the substance of things hoped for Um, You know, it's the substance of things hoped for. It's evidence of things that are not seen. Faith operates in the present, all right? Trust in God when we don't see the outcome. Some of us are there right now. It's an act of reliance on God's character and His Word. And so uh, faith is walking forward even when the promise is unseen. It's what it looks like for the right now. Faith is like walking on a path in darkness, trusting that each step is secure because God lights your way. Sometimes it looks like this. Sometimes faith looks like, let me see if I can get this to work. It looks like my light on my cell phone and it's just like this. But at other times it's like this. Come on, y'all. I mean, it just lights up all over you, all on you. God's lighting up the path real clear. It's, it, it works real well for us. And so that, that's what it looks like for us. Hope, on the other hand, is expectation for the future. That's where we see Simeon. That's where we see Anna in this picture. It's that confident expectation and anticipation of a of future good based on God's promises. It's Jesus' second coming. There's a hope there. It's tied to the future and what God will do. And so this morning, as we're looking at these two very Bible words, right? Hope and faith. Romans 8 would say say it like this. In this hope, we're saved. Like you're saved and I'm saved today. But hope that is is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? Hope looks forward. Can you say that with me? Hope looks forward. Come on, say it again. Hope looks forward. In other words, it's like anchored in God's promises, especially regarding eternal life and His ultimate redemption. Hope is holding on, knowing God's promises are certain. Where are you with this today? Are you holding on, knowing God's promises are certain? Hope is like, man, yesterday morning, we started running before daylight. And uh, it was about 29 degrees, I believe. It was, it was a little cold. But hope, see, hope, it, the difference is hope is like seeing the sunrise on the horizon. There's nothing like it if you've never, if you've never been out. Some of you, got, you hunt and all these other things, and you know exactly what it's like. It was so pretty yesterday morning, though, because I was freezing. I don't like running in the cold. I do it because I'm disciplined and I'm training. Amen? And so, but as it's coming up, there's a little bit of light 
and there's darkness, and there's a little bit of, I can feel a little bit of heat because I'm seeing light. Come on, somebody. That's what hope's like. It's seeing the sunrise on the horizon, knowing a new day's coming, even though it's not fully here yet. And some of you today, just like we lit the hope candle and said, you're waiting, you're waiting in this season of waiting. Hey, God's right there with you. Faith provides the foundation for hope. It's the substance of things hoped for, while hope fuels and sustains faith by pointing to the future fulfillment of God's promises for you and for your life and for, and, and, you know, for your family. The difference between biblical faith and love, one more time, it's in their focus and it's in their function in our lives. And they're very deeply connected. They help believers navigate the challenges of the present and the uncertainties of the future. Right? With everything we do. And so um, where I want to land today, though, is I want to land on this word hope. All right? Faith trusts God for today. Hope anticipates his promise for tomorrow. I can't wait for the second coming, right? In the Bible, biblical hope is, is defined as confident expectation. It's trusting on God's promises. Some of you are there today. Some of you are you're, you're, you're by faith, but you're, you're barely hoping. I want you to hope with everything in you and know that it's trust in God's promises. It's not mere wishful thinking, but it's a firm assurance based on God's character and on His faithfulness. I could say it like this. like Faith is the assurance of what we hope for, but where I think we need some help. This is where Rodney needs help. I don't know about you, but this is where I need help, is in trust. See, trust is confidence in the character of God. God's had me working on his character. Not, yeah, I, he's always working on my character. <laughs> he's working on yours too, if you didn't know it or not. But he's always uh, working on my character. But I'm talking about his character. The more I know about his character, the more I trust in him, the greater levels of faith I have so I can hope like, wow, this is really going to happen. It's not wishful thinking, but it's a firm assurance based on his character and faithfulness. The most widely used Bible passage on hope is Jeremiah 29, 11, right? For I know the plans I have for you. God has plans for you. That's why we love our growth track, because we help you discover your purpose or your plans for your life. He has plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you, say that word with me, a uh, hope. Come on, say it like you mean it. A uh, hope. And a future. And so faith trusts God today. Hope anticipates his promise for tomorrow. Just like the first advent, the second advent is so important to us. I love how Pastor Kevin Gerald says this. He's a pastor off the, off the northwest coast out there. Pastor Gerald says it like this. Uh, he says, hope is the stubborn, unrelenting determination to not allow the hardships of life to downsize the bigness of God. And that's probably where you are today if you're hope, feeling hopeless. Is that you've allowed all these things of the world to come in and downside the, downsize the bigness of this great God that we serve. And so I'll leave you with three things this morning. Three hope-filled thoughts for the Advent. Week one, as we're stepping in this morning. Number one is hope in God's promises. I can't say enough. In order to know what his promises, what they are for me and what they are for, for you, we have to get in his word. That's where we find all the promises. You could actually Google it and get God, you know, and just say, Google, give me 10, you know, 10, the 10 top Bible promises for an individual or for me. Hope in God's promise. See, hope was promised and God delivered. For unto us a child is born, right? A son is given. God's promises are the anchor. It's like being in a boat in the winds and the waves. But when you're anchored, God's promises are the anchor of our hope. The birth of Jesus fulfills God's promises to send a Savior. So we, we've got Him. Reminding us the hope is rooted in His unchanging Word. So number one is hope in God's promises. Number two is hope through Christ's arrival. Well, I, I could say it like this. Hope is fulfilled. In other words, today... Y'all remember the story, right? Luke 2, 11. In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The, the arrival of Christ transforms hope from a wish into reality. The Advent season 
is a celebration of Christ coming into the world, fulfilling prophecies, bringing hope that's both tangible and life-changing. And so first and foremost, we have to hope in God's promises. Second, we hope through Christ's arrival. And the third thing is this, we hope for the future. Like, it, it's hope for eternal glory. That's what I, I like to say. I can't wait. Remember the writer of Romans, what he said. It's in this hope that we're saved. Advent points us to the greater hope yet to come. That's why we light the candles. That's why we pray the prayers. That's why we talk about all the things that are going on. It's because faith trusts God for today, but, but hope anticipates His promise for tomorrow. And this hope fuels perseverance and trust in God's ultimate plan. For you today, my heart's cry for you is persevere. Persevere and trust in God's ultimate plan for your life. This morning, let's stand up. Come on, let's go ahead, bow our heads, close our eyes. Thank you, Jesus, for today. I thank you just for just a simple illustration of who you are, Jesus. Illustrating that you've given us hope. You've given us uh, not just hope, but faith as well. Father, I pray today that we would see, um, Lord, that all the things that are going on in us and through us and around us. And that, Lord, we would have faith to trust you for every single thing that's going on. And hope to anticipate your promises for even tomorrow. Lord, I pray this morning for strength to, of will, for doing good, that, Lord, when you come back, we would be found um, doing things, Lord, that are way beyond who we are in God. It's how you've created us. It's how you've made us. Lord, I pray today for hope. I pray today for faith to arise for people in this room, God, that are maybe hopeless. I pray today, Father, God, that, um, Lord, we're, that we would desire to live our lives, Lord, and, and like we've never lived before in this season, with great expectation and anticipation of what you want to do with us and to us and through us, with our families, with our marriages, as a single person, in our homes, with our businesses, Father. I pray for that today. Father, I thank you so much for just allowing your Holy Spirit to give us a desire to have hope beyond anything, God, that we've ever asked, dreamed, or imagined in this season. With heads bowed and eyes still closed, I also pray today, maybe you're here and you stepped into this today and you're, you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. You've never had... Um, the light of salvation in your eyes like we, we saw with Simeon. And you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. I would like to say to you, today is the day of your salvation. Just as in the Bible, hope's an indication of certainty amidst uncertainty. It, it's a strong, confident expectation. And for you today, we've been praying for you. If that's you this morning, just right there where you are. It's not the words that save you, but it's, it's your heart to his heart today. But you can just say Jesus. Scripture says, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Just say Jesus. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need your grace to forgive me. And I need your love to change me. Jesus, thank you for your amazing love. And I thank you for giving me hope today. And I thank you for shedding your blood that covers my sin. And forgiven me life and eternity. But above all else, I thank you for dying on the cross for me, Jesus. So right here and right now, I accept you and I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. And that means I'm a Christian now. And I'm asking you to, um, to live inside of me by the power of your Holy Spirit. That means I belong to you. And I want to live my life with you, not just now, but forever. Jesus, thank you for saving me. It's in your name I pray. Amen and amen. So as we close out with this song this morning, remember that we have several things 
you know, around the room. First and foremost, I would say right there where you are, ask yourself a couple of questions. You know, what's God saying to me about hope? You know, and what's God, what does God want me to do about hope? The other thing would be um, our prayer team's up front. If you need prayer for anything, they would love to be able to pray with you. We have crosses all around the room. Maybe there's something that's holding you back uh, from being a hopeful person, whatever that might look like for you today. Man, you could take that and pin it to the, one of those crosses and, and leave it there and say, God, I want faith so that I can become a person this year that hopeful in everything that you've got for me. You know, maybe today that you would like to partake of communion. No better time than in this season, week in and week out, to partake of the elements to remind us of Jesus' second coming or the second advent, right? And or there's some car prayer cards in the seat back in front of you. You can fill one of those out during this song and uh, turn it in. We're, we're praying for you. Um, or this morning, if you want to light a candle, the candles are back there. Uh, during the song, you know, just light a candle, believe it for God to, that your fire would be white hot in this season for God and or praying for somebody else. I know I lit one this morning, praying and believing for God for salvation of people today. So let's worship this morning. Truly, if there ever was one, God is our way maker. Thank you. 
Our desire this week as you hope in the Lord, you're going to see some things happen. My prayer is for you to persevere through, you know, whatever it is that you're walking through. God's building character in you. Remember today, if you filled out anything on your connection card, if you'd like to get baptized next week, if uh, please make sure and turn in your connection card. We want to connect with you on that as well as um, don't forget about Angel Tree. If you haven't turned in your gift yet, make sure and drop it by the church. We want to get those over to Salvation Army so they can take care of them. Thank you so much for being with us today, Destination Church. We love you. Worship's going to continue.